how can I make a task in my Snowflake database that'll run at certain times and execute some SQL statements that I need to execute at that time or check some statuses or whatever. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at tasks in Snowflake. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a new task, and then we're gonna schedule it. And we're also gonna show some gotchas around enabling it and things like that to make sure that your task runs. And uh, that's gonna be very, very handy for us. Let's get to it. Interested in more exposure in this area? Make sure to check out my Patreon and make sure to check out the VIP section, which has Discord and Voice Hangouts. Okay, guys, so we've got a pretty fun one today. Uh, we're gonna create a task here, and uh, I'll start with the idle shell. I'm gonna uh, create new, and uh, I'm, I put my, um, my credentials up above the cursor there. Uh, we're gonna show those in variables here in just a second. But for now, we'll just get started with our import statement. We're going to use that snowflake.connector. And uh, you can import the Snowflake connector if you look at uh, the very first video in this series shows you how to get that one. Uh, make sure you get the one with the uh, square brackets pandas on the end. Um, and that'll give you access to all of the panda stuff as well. Um, and uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to... I'm going to paste in a connection string that I used in our previous video here and uh, I'm going to put that into our try block and uh, now make sure that uh, you know your role is set to account admin or if you have another role that is has got uh, you know create task privileges uh, or execute um, privileges um, then you can use that one. Uh, that topic could take up a whole video uh, on how and why and, and that you need to do those things. And so I might come back to that in another video. But for today, we're going to just use our account admin uh, role and a login that has the account admin role attached to it. And uh, uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create that connection. That's uh, cnn equals sc.connect. And then we'll put in our credentials and we're going to make sure that we're in the right warehouse database and schema. Um, and then we'll uh, create our uh, connection cursor. Uh, CS is equal to the connection.cursor. Um, that's going to give us an ability to execute some statements here. And then uh, we'll give some feedback saying we're going to create our task and then we can create our SQL string. Now you can run this uh, SQL string from a file if you want. Um, I have a video on that. Uh, check the link up above if you're interested in how to run your SQL statements from a file. And that's a very, very handy uh, so that you can create one little script and then you can just change your SQL file. But for today, what we're going to do is create our uh, task using, um, just using text here. And so I'm putting in some uh, line breaks here. That's what the slash n is there. Um, that's just going to add that. In case uh, the task is pulled up for editing from somewhere else, uh, you'll likely see the line breaks and it'll be a lot nicer to look at um, as opposed to just putting in one big long string uh, with no line breaks. Um, so I'm going to uh, create the task project check. I'm going to put it in our project warehouse. That's the second line there. And then I'm going to schedule it using cron. Now for a lot of you, uh, cron is going to be really familiar uh, because you know it's the the scheduler used all over the place in different environments and uh, what that means there is I'm going to run it on the first minute of every hour um, I'll come back to that I'll, I'll actually change that to uh, star there uh, now if you're interested in cron I'm going to put a link so that you can go and determine your scheduling uh, and what the what all those stars mean and, and how it it creates your schedule you know every minute or every hour or the 30th minute of every you know every 4 30 a.m or whatever um, I'll put a link for that there's a good link um, there's a good website for that so we'll say uh, create 
using cron as and then after as is where you're going to put whatever it is that your uh, task is going to do so it could be a string of sql statements um, it, you can execute uh, a store procedure which is very very common you can just use uh, a store procedure there um, you can do all kinds of stuff you can call um, things from uh, snowpark and so uh, it's very, very handy. What I'm going to do here today, I'm just going to insert two values into our project events table. Um, and uh, I'll just, or I'll, I'll insert two uh, field entries. I'll make one row with project check, and there was an automated check. Um, and then uh, we're going to try to run this statement as if we're running this automated check every minute. Um, and so I will uh, do a cs.execute SQL there, and then I'll commit that, um, and uh, and then I'll do uh, uh, some feedback for the user here, and that's gonna create our our uh, task in the system. However, the task isn't automatically uh, turned on when you create it, so you need to make sure that you resume it. Um, and you do that by doing an alter task uh, resume. Now, if you want to suspend it to stop it, because it's good to stop it if you need to change the task, um, then you can suspend it um, instead of resume. And so that's kind of how you turn your task on and off in Snowflake. And uh, very, very easy. It's one line. And you just say, you know, uh, you know resume or suspend. Uh, depending on what you need to do at that time. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to do a cs.execute and then I'll commit it. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't think the commit is actually necessary there, uh, but I'll commit anyway. And then once we've got our alter task uh, resume happening, um, that's going to turn it on. And I'm going to do a selection from the project events table so that we can see any results that happen in there. Now, there isn't going to be any results immediately because we're going to try and run this every minute. Um, and uh, as I said before, I'm going to change that one up there to a star um, so that we're not doing it once every hour, but we're going to do it every minute. And that'll give us some records to look at. And so here we go. We've got our select statement, select star from project underscore events. And I'll do uh, records is equal to our cs.execute. And I'll say for uh, record in records, uh, print that record um, just to give us some feedback. Um, and, uh, and then I'll close off. I'm going to close off our, our try uh, block here. And I'll put an exception in there. So we'll do accept exception as E. And then we'll just print that off if that happens. And then we'll add a finally uh, block in here so that, um, you know, regardless of what happens, even if we get an error, uh, we want to make sure we're closing that connection um, so that it's clean and, uh, and, you know, the connection gets closed. And then we'll print some feedback saying uh, closed. If I could type here. There we go. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, there we go, and then at the very end I'll say print done. Regardless of anything that happens, we're going to say done at the end of our script. And so now we can uh, we can take a look at this and see, uh, you know, check out our uh, our script here. Now, like I said, that uh, one there is going to be a star, but the star means every, and so it goes minute, hour, day, I think, and then week, and then year, I think, is are the four stars and so you can schedule it to be every minute like we just did there I change it to a star otherwise it would have executed if I left the one there it would have been the first minute minute of every hour um, and uh, so that's one change I'll make to the script before we go here um, and you can see it's got America New York on there so you can choose different time periods and uh, it's any of you who are familiar with cron uh, you will definitely understand what's going on there. Um, again, check out the link that I will put in the description for how to use Cron, um, how to get those timings just right for your program. 
Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section here. Um, I'm going to set auto commit to true so that anything that we do in our procedure um, is auto committed uh, because we're, we don't actually have a chance once it's scheduled and it's running I don't have a chance to put a commit in there um, so I'm just going to say auto commit and that'll make sure that any um, you know record inserts or updates or whatever that are done in our procedure are actually committed um, in the database so as you can see there are a bunch of things that you can set on your procedure and I would encourage you to take a look at the documentation uh, because there are different uh, settings and configurations that you can use for your task um, this is sort of the most basic uh, task that you can run um, uh, but I will go ahead and I'll execute that and uh, and then I think we're good to go there so I've got a commit there and uh, uh, why not we'll just paste that in there so we're going to commit this at each step here um, probably over I'm over committed <laughs> but uh, uh, there we go we've got our our alter task we're going to set uh, auto commit equals to true and I think we're good to go so there is our create statement uh, we're going to uh, you know set our auto commit to true on our task and then uh, we're going to we're going to enable that task by using a resume alter task uh, statement with resume there and then I'm just going to select whatever's in the table at the end so that we see something at the very end if there are any records which at this case in I think in the very beginning there won't be uh, because we have to wait for a minute for the or at least for the minute for the first one to uh, to to happen so if I hit a five there we go we can see connecting and it creates our task and it sets auto commit to true it starts it and then it's going to select some records which aren't there aren't any and then disconnects and it closes so hopefully that worked we're going to check again here in a minute just to see if there are any records in our table and so now that the task is created I can comment out the executes on each of the creation related um, items there and I'll just leave in the select so that uh, our connection will go in and check it oh there we go so the first one came through and uh, you can see it's got uh, an ID and it has an auto date stamp there that was part of the or I should say it's a default value of current uh, date time and uh, uh, so there we go that's what we wanted to see from our table if I wait another minute um, I did a bit of time lapse there uh, if I wait another minute you can see that a second record got added um, and uh, that's what we wanted to see and then if I wait another minute and I run it again there we go that that there is our third record um, which is uh, definitely what we want to see and you can see the timestamps on each record it's actually a field uh, with the default value of current timestamp and uh, that's what we like to see there so we can go back and we can see our resume here and we're going to set that to suspend instead and I'm going to try and do this before the next minute happens and I'll go ahead and change that to suspend. I'm going to enable the cs.execute in my script and then I'll just run it and it should have uh, turned off or disabled that task. Now it says start resume there but we suspended it so you could change your script for you know whatever uh, context that you're using it there uh, but if you wanted to set it back to uh, resume you could and then you could re-resume your task and start it again um, after say you updated it or changed it or something like that and so that is sort of the nuts and bolts of how to do a task uh, create a task uh, in Snowflake using Python uh, obviously there is a lot more to it um, and you there's a lot of options and there's a lot of security and, and things like that around it if you're interested to hear more about those things make sure to put that in the comment section below and we'll cover that another time. Need the files used in these videos? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description.